Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Um, I'm going to make, this is going to be a short video, it's not going to be as long as my other last couple of videos that I've done. Uh, this video is actually something quite encouraging. Uh, it was actually a, an interesting dream I just had and uh, it had Jesus in it so I'm going to tell it to you. It was a very um, encouraging dream. And uh, first I'm going to read a couple of um, Bible verses. I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 19. Um, verse 7, I think I'll start from, no, let's read from verse 6. Uh, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord, om Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he hath saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do not, uh, thou do not it, or do, see thou do it not. This is so because John's talking to an angel at this point. I am a fellow servant, and thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Uh, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I saw a heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in, his, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. I think I'll stop there. Um, I think I'll stop right there. Okay. So, I had a dream, and uh, <coughs> it's a very strange dream, but anyway, I, I, first of all, let me tell you that... Um, when I started, first started making videos a few years ago now, <clears throat> I was complaining quite heavily to the Lord that I never got to see my wedding dress or got to see my, um, see, at least I, if I didn't get to see my wedding dress, at least show me some wedding cakes, you know, I get to see my wedding cake. I, 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 I felt I wanted to be part of some planning here in my, my own wedding. That's <laughs> every woman wants to be part of the planning of her own wedding and part of the excitement of putting a wedding together, I mean, you know, what woman doesn't? Every woman wants to be part of, you know, who's going to you know, sit where and, and the, the flower arrangements. It's all exciting. It's all a very exciting thing to be ready, getting ready for a wedding. So I was complaining quite a bit when I, when I first started my YouTube channel. I was complaining quite a bit about, well, everyone else seems to be getting visions of wedding dresses and wedding cakes, and I get to see nothing. I don't understand. So the Lord one day, gave me a dream about wedding cakes, but this time they were raining from heaven. It wasn't just one cake I saw. I saw multiple cakes falling to the, from heaven to the ground. <laughs> and the Lord has a sense of humor, I tell you. He was, he was having a little giggle on me. And I, when I woke up, I was actually laughing because it was quite funny because I was complaining about wedding cakes and here was the, it was raining wedding cakes. It was raining cakes of all kinds and people were running around holding out their arms like this to catch the cakes. And anyway, I woke up from that dream laughing. It was, it was quite funny. And, um, and as a result, I never asked for another dream for about wedding cakes because the Lord was showing me, you want to see cake? Here's cake. <laughs> anyway, it was rather funny. I still giggle about it. Um, but anyway, I hadn't seen anything about a wedding dress, so I'm still feeling a little discouraged. And oh, everyone else is getting wedding dress dreams, and I'm not getting any. I don't understand. So anyway, I stopped. I stopped asking. I really just stopped, stopped asking, basically. And uh, anyway, last night I had a dream about a wedding dress, but I didn't get to see the whole thing. And this is the way the dream was. It was. Um, it was rather interesting. I was sitting in my chair. And I haven't shown you my chair, but my chair is actually, it's not a lounger. It's not a lounge chair, so it doesn't fling back. It's actually quite straight. And I sit, when I sit in it, and I actually fall asleep in it, I fall asleep sitting up. And usually because 
the Lord's doing brain surgery on me. I usually fall asleep sitting up straight. And and when I fart, start to fall asleep, I usually just slump a little bit. Anyway, in his dream, I was, I'm sitting in my chair. And I'm, in reality, I was sitting in my chair. But in my dream, I was sitting in my chair. So I had a kind of funny feeling. I felt, felt like it was really happening, to tell you the truth. When I was having this dream, I felt like this was really happening because I was in a familiar place, in a familiar spot. So when it started happening, I'm thinking, no, something's happening. I, I thought it was really occurring rather than a dream. So it shows you that there maybe this was a little bit more than a dream. But anyway, um, as I'm sitting there in this dream, I'm being pushed down. I could feel the pressure of someone putting their hands on my shoulders and pushing me down in the chair so that I wasn't just leaning, sitting back or leaning back against my chair. I was actually being pushed down so that I was lounging a little bit further because I have a footstool in front of my chair. And I was being sl slid over so that I was leaning back a little bit further and a little bit more straight. And uh, that was the first part of it. I mean, this is what how the stream started. And then <laughs> something very strange happened. I, The chair, the whole chair started to tilt back. The whole chair started to tilt back towards, slowly towards the ground. It's like, I felt like um, a spirit was an angel or some powerful entity was, it had to be an angel or, or Jesus, but I, I felt like it was an angel was pushing me slowly towards the floor. My, my head in the chair was leaning and getting closer to the floor. Next thing I know, I was actually being rolled in this chair, head over, oh, head over heel, out of the room. I rolled about three times, I guess. <laughs> I know, it's really strange. Um, but anyway, I was being rolled in this chair out of the room. And I was, I found myself in some kind of, um, uh, I guess, some kind of uh, machine or some kind of flying apparatus, an elevator or something. I don't know exactly what it was, but I was taken to another location. And I was taken to what looked like a um, a hospital exam room. It was it was not a huge room, but it was a big examination room in in a hospital type atmosphere. There were lights and and, and the thing is oh, oh oh I forgot to mention um, in this dream I felt like they were putting me I was being put to sleep before I was being slid down. I felt like I was being put to sleep, um, like this this the spirit was trying to make sure that I was asleep. So that I wasn't fully awake of what was, what was happening to me, but I was I was awake and I was pretending to be asleep. And that was that that's an important part. I was pretending to be asleep in the dream, uh, um, um, as this angel was putting me under and then pushing me down and then rolling me out. So I was pretending like I was asleep during the whole thing. So you got that. So anyway, I was I found myself in this room. And it was a, like I said, a, kind of a medical looking room, very clinical looking room. It had um, um, a, a gurney, I guess, a, a bed or a flat bed, which I was on. And there was lights above and there was these women in this room. It was a room full of women, not about seven or eight women. And they were busy doing all kinds of stuff, walking around and <laughs> they were happy. They were happy women. And uh, but while I'm lying there, I'm thinking, what am I doing here? I wonder what I'm doing here. And as I'm lying there, I'm pretending to be asleep, and I'm on my back on this gurney in this room. This woman began, I could see, uh, as I was pretending to be asleep, I had my eyes like, you know how you do this thing, like pretending to be asleep. <laughs> anyway, I was watching what she was doing, and she was fitting a fabric to my, my shoulder, and I could see that it was a wedding dress. It was a wedding dress that she was sewing beads on she was be actually sewing I could only see a little tiny part right about here of this wedding dress and I could see that it was a very very elaborate from what I could see and she was sewing little tiny pearls pearl seed seed pearls on and and in sequins a little tiny and she was she was being very meticulous night but I could see it was very beautiful like I said it was only a tiny little bit and I'm thinking to myself yeah I get to see my wedding dress finally but I only got to see that bit but what was interesting is I was lying there. The women started taking measuring 
they took measuring tapes and they were measuring me from length to top. And I see they were trying to measure for my train. They were measuring, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, while they were measuring me, while I'm lying on this gurney pretending to be asleep, I'm thinking to myself, I sure hope I'm a lot skinnier in heaven. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I sure hope I'm a lot skinnier in heaven. But anyway, they were busy measuring and, and then my arms, they were measuring and they were measuring tapes and they were measuring, measuring. And they even measured my hands for gloves. They, I, this woman took a measure and she was measuring my hands for gloves. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, this is what they're doing. They're, they're taking my measurements for my wedding dress. They're taking care of my wedding. These are the women who are going to sew my wedding dress or put it together. So... <laughs> They were busy measuring me, and I was still pretending to be asleep. And then, for some reason, I was on my I was on my on my stomach, and a a, a woman got on. Um, she was measuring me from the, the back of my neck to the you know she was busy, and then she got up on top of my back. She was sitting on my back, and she was doing something to my hair. I didn't know what it was because I was pretending to be asleep. She was doing something to my. It wasn't painful or anything. It was just doing something to my hair, and and then she got off, and then she went on uh, about her business, and then. I, um, I, I'm still pretending to be asleep on the screen, and I was listening to these women as they were talk, talking about lipstick. And they're saying, "Well, it's kind of hard to decide what colored lipstick she should wear when, when she's when she's asleep." So they were trying on lipsticks on themselves, and you know they would just hold up a color, and the the, the color would come onto their lips, and um, magically it was like, "Oh, yeah!" And all of a sudden, their lips would be this certain color. I said it was a it was a really fun dream as I'm watching this all thing this whole thing happening. I'm thinking this is really fun. So anyway, well I'm the hard part of this dream I was while well, I was on this gurney pretending to be asleep, a man came into the room. He was a maintenance man. And he was a black fellow and he was carrying a uh he was pushing a maintenance, you know, bag a buggy that you know usually have your mop and your your broom and whatever. And he was the maintenance guy. And he was really, really happy. In fact, he was singing a song. He was singing a Christmas song. Even though it was a Christmas song, he was singing Christmas, a Christmas carol. I can't remember which, which Christmas carol it was, but I just was aware of the fact that he was singing a Christmas carol. It was like something familiar, like, come all you faithful or something to that effect. He was singing. And then we had a beautiful voice and he was singing as loud as he could. And he was so happy. And he was, you know, but basically maintenance was very easily. He walked into the room and, and everything magically flew into his buggy and, and away he went. As he walked down the hall, he was singing his, his heart out. And I was listening to him thinking, what a beautiful voice he has. And then, um, so <laughs> while these women were off busy checking out lipstick and then doing this and doing that, looking at, and, you know, working on the situation, I was still sitting, lying on the gurney pretending to be asleep. Well, I decided to get up. I wasn't going to stay on that gurney. I was going to get up and walk around. So I did. <laughs> they weren't, they still didn't notice that I had, had that I was awake and that I was, you know, they had bus gotten busy doing something else. I got up and I started walking around this, this facility. It wasn't very big. It was a small, what seemed like a medical clinic. And <laughs> I walked out into the hallway and I walked into what, what appeared to be a waiting room. And there were people who were maimed. I noticed one man who had, didn't have a leg and he only had half half a leg on one on his left leg. And there was a bone sticking out of his leg. But he was sitting there as happy as could be, laying on his cane like this and talking to the guys next to him and they were they were, they were uh they were waiting for their uh transformation, I guess. They were waiting for their new bodies or their new body parts or something, but they were waiting and they were all happy. And that's the thing is they were, nobody was in pain. Nobody was hurting. They were all happy. They were all chatting. They all looked content. <laughs> so it was really a happy experience, even though everyone was waiting in this waiting room. There were several people, a lot of people actually, waiting in this waiting room, um, in this clinic. There was no discontentment, no pain, no sorrow, no, and everyone was just very, very upbeat. And I'm thinking, well, what a happy place. <laughs> this is a happy place. And so anyway, I walked around and took, took a look around. And then when I came back to the room, of course, they noticed that I wasn't there. But nobody was upset that I had gotten up and, and took a look around. And uh, anyway, Jesus shows up. Now, he didn't quite look like what you assume Jesus to look like. But I knew in my spirit that this was Jesus. And he'd come uh, to the room because I was standing uh, just inside the room and the people, the women were around me, and Jesus shows up, 
the first thing he did was give me a big kiss. And uh, that pleased everybody in the room. <laughs> and then he said to me, and he said, I said, did you know that I wasn't asleep? Did anybody notice that I wasn't asleep? And they said, no, no, we didn't notice that you weren't asleep. We thought you were asleep. We, had, we didn't know, I had no idea. And Jesus himself said, I didn't know you weren't asleep either. So I said, um, oh, I, it, I said, well, I wasn't. And I said, uh, oh, I was trying to remember what he, oh, how this whole scenario went. I said, no, no, I wasn't. I, 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 was, I was pretending to be asleep. So anyway, they thought that was a little amusing. And then Jesus said to me, he says, uh, um, I, can you make me some cookies? <laughs> he said in my dream so can you make me some cookies and I said to him um, I said cookies I didn't know you liked cookies and he said I said uh, oh, no, he didn't say anything at that point I said I didn't know you liked cookies I said well what kind do you want and he said uh, he thought for a moment I could see him thinking about it and he said peanut butter and I said oh I can make you some peanut butter cookies come by tonight I'll have a well. I'll have um, a cup of coffee, and I'll make you some peanut butter cookies. Well, he looked really pleased with this suggestion, and I felt, oh, that's this is exciting. Jesus is coming by TV this evening, and I'll make him some peanut butter cookies. And basically, that was the end of the dream. The, I w became aware that I was dreaming, and then I woke up, and I was still sitting in my chair. <laughs> Anyway, I thought that was such an amusing dream and very, very encouraging because I, like I said, had been, I asked many, many, many times the Lord, can I please see my wedding dress? Well, I've got to see a little glimpse, a little glimpse. And they were measuring me for my wedding dress. I was being measured in my dream for my wedding dress. This is an encouraging uh, dream, not just for myself, but for the body of Christ. We're being fitted for a wedding dress, people. No more lonely nights. Anyway, I will uh, talk to you later. God bless and have a great day.